Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to speak about a topic that, that I became interested in in the last couple of years. Uh, how scientific information uh, helps people to be connected. That's in fact to, to talk in the, in the words uh, of this Los Dama project. Um, This is about uh, how, how scientific information helps people to connect. Um, I, I've worked at Altera, uh, so on the, the, in the transition phase, in the transition between science and practice. Um, started off as, a, as, a, as an ecologist, but gradually I became more and more involved in, um, in governance in, in, planning and the social aspects of uh, people using science, scientific information. Okay, um, if you think this, this guy sounds like he has got a gold, yes you're right. Uh, I'm apologize for my voice and uh, I'm glad that this, this conference was not organized in the early part of this week. Um, okay, here we go. Um, I'll do it like this. Um, so this, the, the background of my talk is the, uh, what is called the science practice gap. Um, so the, the idea is that, that scientific information is not properly used uh, in practice. And, um, uh, and one of obvious solution is then that, that people say scientists should better communicate. That's true. Uh, but it's not enough. Um, they should work together with practitioners. That's also true. Uh, even to the extent that, that knowledge is co-created. So that it's not only uh, the scientific knowledge but also the knowledge of practitioners that, and the local knowledge that is being integrated to, to, to make uh, uh, more sensible knowledge. So these are two um, solutions to the problem. Uh, there is also uh, scientific, uh, scientific research being done on this on this problem, and I would like to highlight the publication of uh, uh, David Cash et al. in 2003 that I like very much because he is very simply uh, identifying uh, the, the the key characteristics of of knowledge uh, of knowledge. That, that knowledge should have to be to be to be accepted by people. Uh, so knowledge should be credible. He says it should be salient. And that is salient is that it is relevant to the problem at hand, and that it is legitimate, so that it counts for the values that are in it. Um, but very little research has been done up to now on the question: what scientific information, if you use it, if you apply it in a, in a group of people? What it does, uh, especially in relation to collaboration, to relations between people, and of course, talking about landscapes and about landscape management and landscape development and green infrastructure development, it's all about collaboration between actors that have different interests and different backgrounds and different knowledge. So that's my talk about, um, and I take this. Um, this model of, of the landscape uh, with me. Um, so landscape to me is a social ecological network, which, which has an ecological part and a governance network part, and they are of course interrelated. Um, one relation is the, what I call the benefits of landscape services. Uh, so the, the, the benefits that, that people have from being in a landscape, working with a landscape, uh, making money from landscape. Uh, and the other interaction is uh, uh, the interventions that people do in the landscape to make it better fit for their needs, now or in future. And of course there are lots of, lots of things happening there. Um, you have the spatial pattern of the, for example, the green infrastructure that is very much determining uh, the functioning of, of landscapes and thereby the, the values that are, 
that are created by, by the services that, that, that landscapes bring to people. So you can influence those values by changing the pattern. And on the other side, there are a lot of things going on, like deliberations and negotiations about uh, how the landscape looks and what it does to people. The right information flows, there is a lot of social learning there. Um, and so, this is all relevant to uh, the social ecological network. So how does information influence this network? So I have four types of information here that I will use later on in, in the talk. So the landscape service is a, it's, it's, it's like an ecosystem service, but in this context I, I prefer to talk about landscape services for several reasons which I'm not going to display, to explain. Um, the, um, so you can give information about landscape services and what they are and what they do and what, why, why they are valuable. Uh, but also that they have shared benefits because the, the, many of these values are not interesting for only one type of actor, one sector, but, but most often for a series of uh, actors in the landscape. So, so therefore they have shared benefits with the landscape. Um, so everybody has a benefit of pollution, uh, for pollination, sorry. Um, then there is information about green infrastructure. Um, how it is structured, uh, how it works, uh, how it can be changed. Um, and, but talking about green infrastructure, it is also important to give information about the interdependency that people, of, of people, for landscape management, because if they want to, to profit from the landscape, they have to cooperate because they are interdependent. So the, the, the benefits are, are regulated on the landscape level and not on the, just on the level of their own garden. So people are interdependent and you can inform them about that. Four types of uh, information, once again, but I'm putting another way. Uh, so we have the green infrastructure, it's about the physical characteristics of the landscape. Sorry. Um, we have the landscape services, that's about the functioning of the landscape and the benefits that it provides to, to people. It's about the interdependency that especially the owners of the landscape have in, when, when they want to uh, improve the landscape, uh, whatever it is. And we have the shared benefits uh, of, that people have by using the landscape and working and living in the landscape and working with the landscape. So that's the background of, of my talk. And I will now um, discuss four Dutch cases in which I was involved um, and see what we learned there about um, the the use of, uh, of, of, the, of the, the, the role of knowledge in, in, the, so in the governance network. So at first we have the Hoeks of Art case, and we learned there that shared benefits helped to build a governance network. We have the uh, Gouwe Wierke case, um, where we learned that if you distinguish uh, provider and demander roles, uh, you may enhance the, the governance arrangement. In this case, uh, about paying for ecosystem services. We have the Green Circles project, where we learned that if people learn about the requirements for pollinator populations, and physical requirements in the landscape, then they, uh, that, then they learned that it was important to collaborate, so it stimulated collaboration. And finally, the Box of Bake, where um, we saw that actors preferred multiple benefit solutions above single benefit solutions when they learned each other's interest. So it's important to say here that um, all cases, in all cases, um, scientists uh, were involved. And so they cooperated uh, with actor groups, they organized workshops. Um, and we, that had the aim to, uh, to 
uh, of collaborative, collaborative decision making. So a very active um, role of scientists, and I will uh, come back to that later on why that is so important. So the Hooks Bart, <coughs> first case, is a former uh, salt marsh area, but since the Middle Ages already uh, used for uh, agriculture, food production. Uh, and nowadays, uh, uh, economically feasible sound um, form of animal farming. Um, it, the case is about just introducing sustainable farming. Um, it's already a little bit older, 2005. Um, and um, the na natural pest control, the introduction of, of the landscape services, natural pest control was a key service here. And other services uh, that, uh, that were uh, discussed was water purification, landscape character, and uh, the occurrence of valuable species that was important to people. Um, so here is how the, uh, the building up of the social ecological network uh, happened. It started off with, with farmers, the right side. Um, a small group of farmers who wanted to develop their farming uh, into a more sustainable farming uh, for several reasons which I will not explain here. Uh, and I thought that, it, that the way to do it was to, to develop field margins, flowery field margins that would sustain uh, natural enemies of, uh, of pests. Um, so the landscape service here is uh, pest regulation, uh, and they asked researchers of Altera to help them to, uh, to realize that, with the help of the province of South Holland, by the way. Um, so the, the scientists told them that, uh, or they, they, they gave them to uh, discuss with them, uh, the, uh, that apart from the field margins, uh, they could also think of, of, of including the banks of the watercourses and of the dikes in that, in a, in a sort of a landscape network that would provide uh, this best regulation service in a better way, in a more um, reliable way. And they also told them that uh, there were more services that could be uh, uh, the, the provided by this network, water purification, for example, and landscape character, because it, the, the landscape character would be accentuated much more in the occurrence of valuable species. The good thing about that was that um, when, they, when they introduced those um, services as a, as a goal, as an additional goal, the whole thing became, became interesting for other players. Yeah? So in this case, the water board was in, became interested because they were uh, interested in the water purification service. Uh, and also the local conservation group became interested, the former enemies of the farmers, by the way, um, because they learned that this, this, this whole idea was also of interest for uh, species that they, that they liked and, and would have back, um, and the landscape character which they cared for. So, um, with these groups of people and a couple of uh, groups uh, more, um, this, this, the, or, the, the researchers organized a, a couple of workshops uh, which eventually uh, resulted in the uh, actual construction of new, new elements, by, for example by the farms but also by the water board, um, and the uh, change in the management of the existing elements, for example the dikes. Um, so something happened there, and the role of information was that uh, as we see it, that the shared benefits that were provided by green infrastructure uh, motivated actors to join the social ecological network and collaborate there. Gauwe Wierke, uh, the second case, um, it's a water purification again and biodiversity that were services that were in focus. Uh, this is a, a, a peat meadow landscape uh, with a lot of water, as you can see, and the main use of land is dairy farming. 
Uh, and we have uh, here three um, cooper cooperatives of, of farmers uh, involved, and also the, uh, the province of Gelderland, uh, sorry, the province of South Holland, and uh, two water, board, uh, water boards. What the researchers did here was to sort of organize a negotiation table. So we have here, the, again, the green infrastructure uh, lying on the table uh, and uh, the way it influences water purification and biodiversity. Uh, and so the, the researchers uh, developed some tools to, to inform the farmers how they could change the green infrastructure, in this case the ditches and the, and the banks of the ditches, uh, to improve the uh, services, water purification and biodiversity. Um, so that's what I did, and what, what I also did was to, uh, uh, to organize a, a cooperation among the, the farmers, because they, it was important that they, uh, that they uh, proposed um, a way to, to improve this green infrastructure as a group, rather than as individuals. Um, and the other thing that they did was to, uh, on the other side, of the people on the demander side, to, uh, to guide the, uh, the three uh, authorities, the government governmental authorities, to, uh, to come up with one demand, with one single demand, which we were, they were not used to that. Um, so two water boards and one province were brought to the point that they expressed a, a single demand that they could lie on the table. And then the, the, the researchers organized uh, a session in which the, 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 the interactions between supply and demand were negotiated. So in the end up with um, an agreement about paying for these ecosystem services for a couple of years by the three uh, governments to the farmer organizations. So information played here the role of uh, creating a common platform for collaboration and negotiation. That's very important because farmers were not used to, to play at the, at the same playing, uh, playing level with, with, with governments. The governments were there and they were there and they were always told how to do it. But, but by this table they were on the same level. Um, and by distinguishing this supplier and demander roles, um, the, the, uh, if the farmers and government bodies were uh, facilitated to come upon an agreement about the infrastructure management. <coughs> so this, uh, the third case is uh, Green Circles. It's, it's basically a, a, a broader program. This is one of the projects. Um, uh, about the creation of a, a pollinator network by a group of people, a group of organizations. And it has three phases, and this case is, all, is only related to the, the startup phase. But the startup was followed by a, uh, a phase in which the, the, um, the newly created social network was consolidated and, and helped to, to develop a, a sort of uh, ownership. Um, and uh, after that, the, the researchers stepped back and uh, created a sort of self-governance uh, system, which and now it has grown a lot. Um, but I'm talking about the startup only. Uh, these are the, the partners in the startup, so this is about 50, 50 kilometers from left to right, so it's Rotterdam, The Hague, um, uh, and these are the, the main partners in the startup phase. And you see uh, the brewery of Heineken there. And uh, there, is a, there are several um, municipalities in the, uh, involved. Um, so uh, organizations that were not used to work together. So the uh, scientists did uh, uh, organize two Maybe more, but at least two workshops that, with different aims. The first one was uh, uh, to create a sort of shared motive among these people that they that they shared 
the same goal, an A, and that was sort of save the B, and we, we are going to save the B, uh, something like that. And the information there was, uh, that was used was sort of about the importance of pollination for society and for ecosystems and so on, and uh, especially the very negative trends in uh, pollinator populations. So that's, that gave them a reason to act, a why. Uh, and the second uh, workshop was about how, how to do it. So they gave them information on the, what you can call bee infrastructure. So the, the measures to create an infrastructure, a habitat for, for pollinators. And especially also the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the minimum area that was required within this infrastructure to create uh, what they called hubs and breakfast, they call it. Uh, hubs for pollinators to, to, to build a, a sustainable population in particular spots. So minimum, minimum area requirements were interesting because most of the partners could not deliver that. So they, the, the, the properties that they had were not large enough to, uh, uh, to, to create uh, a hub on a particular spot. And that made them learn that they, that they should do it with the neighbor. So that, that was an, a, a motivation to, to cooperate. Because then they could, could do it. So the, the information on the minimum required size of, of, of BHUBs uh, made the actors learn uh, that they were mutually dependent for achieving their goal. But the goal was safe to be, and they could only do it by working together, because they needed to make this, this large <coughs> patches in the landscape. So information about the uh, required size and connectivity of, of green infrastructure will stimulate cooperation between actors. Last case, um, going much more to the east in the Netherlands, uh, a more much more rural um, area. Um, and this is a case about the climate adaptation of the landscape. Um, so the, uh, it, which includes, of course, the adapting the water system, which was very much aimed at uh, getting rid of the water as soon as possible um, in former days for, for farming. Uh, but it will not work in the future anymore. So, uh, climate change adaptation. <coughs> and the researchers, they um, were asked to uh, facilitate this, this process. There are three sectors involved. And so, they, they were, so they did this process with representatives of three sectors, nature conservation, uh, water management, uh, and agriculture farmers uh, to be more precise. So three sectors um, and the, the aim was to, uh, to have a collective decision on, the, on adaptation measures at the end. Collective decision of these three groups. Uh, <coughs> and the way to do it was uh, to, to, to organize a negotiation process uh, that was aimed at finding the, these mutually beneficial solutions, uh, beneficial for all the three groups, and also a recognition that they had to do it together, uh, a mutual interdependence. So um, they gave information about uh, possible measures that could be taken to make the landscape more uh, climate change. Uh, resilient um, by informing uh, to what extent these these measures were uh, creating synergy between sectors and so, uh, to what extent they had they were aiming at multiple uh, were solving multiple purposes at the same time it's not only climate change but also biodiversity crisis or something um, and uh, finally to what extent uh, these measures require landscape level implementation. Uh, so the, 
they, they gave them, the, the researchers gave them seven uh, possible uh, measures that could be taken, and, but also invited them to come up with their own solutions. So they were asked to, uh, if they found it necessary, to, to add measures that they found, that they thought were important, uh, and that, that resulted in four extra, extra ones. Uh, and this, this graph, this amount of information there, but I will only um, focus on the, uh, on the, uh, and so what, I, what, what you see here is uh, all these measures were put on a place that is along, uh, along an axis that, that goes from negative to everybody, to positive to everybody. Uh, and the, the size of the, of the circles, so every circle is a measure, and the size of the circles is uh, indicating, uh, remember that there were three groups, so in, in every, if, if one group is, is, is proposing the measure, then you have a size like this, and if all the three groups uh, propose the measure, then you have the largest uh, circle. So what you see here is that that there is a tendency that the, uh, the, the most popular uh, measures are on the right side, that's the side where, where all groups benefit. So it, indi it indicates again that, uh, that, that people like to cooperate. That if, 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 it, if it's good for everybody, let's do it. Um, so the, the information uh, about shared benefits of landscape services stimulated collaborative behavior. And this was also um, uh, demonstrated by interviews that were uh, done before the workshops and after, showing that, that um, people shifted in their, in their willingness to cooperate uh, to, more, to a more positive attitude. Uh, by, not only by the information, of course, but also by the, uh, uh, the process that happened. So, I'm coming to conclusions here. Um, so, what we think happened in the social network um, because, uh, by using this landscape services concept. Well, I think we, we, we saw improved understanding of, of common dependency on landscape, solid scale patterns and processes, which is one, one reason why, why people decided that it was good to cooperate. Um, Using the concept also strengthened the, the social network uh, as it helped to cross sector boundaries uh, and to create new goals. So it was a, what we call in science a, a boundary concept here. And that uh, enhanced the collaborative decision making and collaborative interventions in the landscape. So people were working together to make it better. Uh, better in the way they de define themselves. Yeah. But there is a big however here. It's uh, that uh, sort of um, um, nuances the, the role of information that, uh, that that I stressed up to now, because this the observed effects of information were achieved in a participatory, in participatory workshops, uh, which were designed in such a way that they maximized. Uh, things like trust and equity between actors, um, that they, they were stimulating ownership uh, of the transformation, so the, the, the ownership of there's something wrong uh, with this landscape and let's do it better. Um, that, that was not told uh, by the government, but it was something that they invented themselves. And the same is was true with the solutions uh, that they uh, selected. So they, these workshops were um, aiming at uh, um, eliciting a lot of social learning here and, and, and getting to know each other and uh, building trust and, and uh, well, and, and I think that uh, we should we could turn it around and say that a community-based process like this is, uh, is conditional to the role of, of scientific information that I identified here. So we have to 
emphasize um, that um, there was a lot of science practice interaction here. Uh, the scientists were engaged in this community-based process. They organized it themselves, they facilitated it, they, they put in information that was especially designed for it. Um, so the, the solutions that came out were co-created, so it's not just the scientists that came up with solutions, but it's, it's basically the people themselves that, that, that created it. Um, not only with scientific knowledge, but also with, with their own knowledge uh, of, of the area. Uh, and whenever there, there were normative choices that, that had to be taken, um, it, was, it was the stakeholders that did so. So if, if you're talking about choosing lands, landscape services that, that, were, that made sense to the area, it was their choice and not the choice of scientists. So I end up with um, a small model. This is sort of a hypothesis, I think, um, that um, uh, a model that, that sort of uh, identifies the, uh, the main things in the science practice interface as I see it in this context. So it start, starts off with scientific knowledge about landscape sustainability. Uh, and the first thing is to get it accepted to get the knowledge accepted by the people. Uh, if not, then forget the rest. Um, and we know, since Cash, but there are a lot of other researchers, that, uh, that, hap that, that happens, that acceptance may happen if the information is, is scientifically credible, uh, it is salient, and so it is at the right scale, and, and and, and it's relevant to the problem that, that people feel there is to be solved. Um, saliency is important here. And also legitimacy, that it's not the, the scientists that make the decisions about values, but it's the people, and that the, the information has makes, uh, gives space to do that. So that's the first uh, connection, and the second one is uh, the uh, the, the influence on the collaborative action uh, in, the, in the landscape network. Um, and I think that uh, information that, that shows the, 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 um, the benefits of, that, that shows that, that um, creating a change in the landscape is, 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 is mutually beneficial, it's, it's, there, is, there are shared benefits. And also an information that shows that you have to do it together because you are interdependent and if you do it together you can be more effective, that sort of information. That, uh, that shows that the personal interest of people can be connected with the common interest of the community. So that sort of information, and I think that landscape services and green infrastructure have that characteristics, uh, can stimulate collaboration, but only if uh, this is done, this is uh, provided, this information is provided uh, as part of a, some sort of a collaborative process uh, in which trust is built, in, in which social learning is facilitated. Thank you very much for your attention.